welcome back to Civilization 5. My name's Jumbo Pixel, and today I'm going to take you through tourism. Now, if you missed my culture guide, I would recommend you check that out first because it lays some of the foundation for this video. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Anyway, let's chat tourism. There is some confusion about how tourism works, so I'll just quickly clarify it. Culture and tourism run hand in hand. Uh, and the simplest way to think about it is that culture is your defense and tourism is your offense. So your civilization must develop a culture, right? Anything from music to blue denim jeans to whatever else. Your civilization will develop a culture. It's unique to it. And that is its defense against what, you might ask? Against tourism. Tourism is your offense. Tourism is the way that you push your culture onto everyone else. We see that in the real world. We see cultural influences move from one civilization or nation state or country into others. Think about how widespread Facebook is, for example, right? That one idea. Or a musician that you really like, uh, who might come from another country or another area or indeed another culture. Tourism works the same, right? It's the ability to spread your culture to someone else and to effectively overpower their culture with your own. And that's how tourism works in Civ 5 as well. You need strong tourism and you need your tourism score to be greater than the cultural score of every other Civ. So forgive me if you already knew that, but I think it's really important to start the video by saying what are culture and tourism and how do they work? And if you've listened to me carefully, you'll understand that they have a very symbiotic relationship. You build up your culture and then you offensively strike with tourism. The way it's technically calculated in the game uh, does vary depend on, depending on uh, the different, say, policies, technologies, or buildings that you have. But fundamentally and quite simply, the way it works is you build up your culture and then a percentage or proportion of your culture is converted into tourism. It can, in some instances, be greater than your culture. But fundamentally, that's how it works. Now let's talk about generating tourism directly and how culture converts into tourism. Your base tourism score will be generated by constructing buildings, wonders, uh, national wonders and tile improvements. Uh, these will be your primary means for developing tourism and of course culture in Civ 5. Uh, instead of providing high uh, base yields for culture and tourism, often these buildings will provide you with slots where you can house great works of art, great works of music, or writing. Uh, each building has a certain number of slots, usually between one and three, uh, and each slot often gives plus two culture and plus two tourism per great work. Uh, those great works will be uh, probably one of the more significant sources of your tourism. Uh, all great artists, writers, and musicians can produce them, and uh, when you expend your great person, they will produce that great work. You should pay quite close attention to um, the different types of slots you have uh, and try and tailor your civilization to fill those slots. Uh, in general, I would say that uh, you should also pay close attention to swapping great works with other civilizations. And um, you can see that on screen now. The, the interface is a little confusing at first, but definitely worth doing. Uh, you can either click around randomly and swap uh, great works of art with other serbs, or you can hover over the building to figure out what it wants and what it needs and what kind of thematic bonuses uh, it requires. Um, they can be a little bit challenging, as I say, but mousing over it will hopefully help you. Uh, one of the main things to remember is the timing of, of those theming bonuses. So you want to try and gather great works from different eras within the game and from uh, other civs and rival players. If you're playing against the AI, they'll basically just swap you whatever you want. So you can put in any request and it will basically be fulfilled, which is kind of funny. As you progress through the game, there are a few other ways to generate base uh, tourism and, of course, culture scores as well. Um, the first one is with great work artifacts, which are produced by archaeologists. So once you research archaeology, archaeological dig sites will appear around the map. You create the archaeologist, which is kind of like a worker, and send them to the dig site. They will then extract a great work artifact that can be transferred to one of your cities, 
or they can create a tile improvement called a landmark. Now, obviously, you don't want to create the tile improvement, uh, the landmark, unless that tile is within uh, three tiles of your city. Otherwise, you won't be able to work the tile and see a lot of the benefits from it. Uh, generally, you're going to be creating great work artifacts, uh, because often you may be sending archaeologists far and wide to dig these up. Uh, completing the exploration tree will also reveal hidden uh, archaeological dig sites, um, usually around 10 or 11, so it may be worth pursuing that if you have the free points available. Um, producing the archaeological uh, great work artifacts it works very similarly to the rest of the great works, so I won't go too much further into that, just make sure that you have your museums etc in place so that you can actually store them. Religion and tourism is another big one, um, so you might want to found a pantheon and then a religion, um, which will make certain tile improvements generate culture. Uh, one that springs to mind, for example, is God of the Open Sky, which gives plus one culture to pastures. Uh, there are other things as well, buildings like cathedrals, uh, another great one. Um, the follower belief will give you uh, an additional great work of art slot, which is really useful. Um, also, uh, another means of generating tourism with religion, which can be helpful in the mid-game is to max out piety uh, to give you the reform a reformation belief and then select sacred sites that will allow you to uh, that will allow buildings to be purchased uh, with faith to generate tourism it's an interesting strategy and one that you could definitely pursue uh, pursue and finally uh, you should also consider the importance of city states uh, some city states are cultural and becoming their ally can be particularly useful for you. Uh, it's something that I find personally I overlook uh, from time to time, but um, you know, you, you can steal those alliances with gold, you can send spies, um, and the ultimate bonuses to your culture, which will later provide tourism, shouldn't be overlooked. So do consider that. Uh, now that we've talked about how to generate base tourism and culture, of course, let's talk about how we use tourism and how we get higher tourism than all other civs cultures to ultimately win through a cultural tourist victory. So as I covered at the start of the video, your tourism score is your offense and your culture score is your defense. You need to try and have your tourism score be greater than every other civs culture. Your offensive score needs to be greater than their defensive. And you have a few ways to do it, and the in-game overlay is really good. So let's ch chuck that up on screen now and have a look. So there are many different ways that you can increase your tourism uh, by applying multipliers to the, your base score. Uh, some of the ways come through ideologies. Uh, for example, I've covered this before. I may cover it again, the freedom ideology. Tier 3 uh, gives you... Uh, one of the tier three tenants gives you plus 34 percent tourism outfit uh, output <laughs> outfit before other bonuses uh in each city with a broadcast tower um uh, another example uh do other examples do exist within order and autocracy but i would recommend uh freedom as your first point of call you can of course send great musicians to perform concerts within other civilizations that will provide a bomb of culture and expend the great musician themselves. Uh, that instant boost is a great way to slam some tourism through. Uh, the World Congress as well, of course, also provides additional bonuses for culture. For example, if you've founded a religion and you get a World Congress proposal to have that religion become the global religion, your holy city receives plus 50% tourism. There are also proposals to convert culture to tourism. Arts funding uh, allows uh, raises uh, the boost, sorry, for great artists, writers, and musicians by 33%. Cultural heritage sites provide additional culture, which of course becomes tourism. Natural heritage sites and historical monuments, likewise providing tourism bonuses. And of course, we can't overlook the International Games, which, if you win, provides 100% tourism for 20 turns. I mean, that's fantastic. These base bonuses should not be overlooked. Another top tip that a lot of you may not know is that spies as diplomats um, in serves, particularly where they don't follow the same ideology as you, is a really great way to go about it. So the penalty for tourism from a differing ideology is minus 34%, but if you instill a spy as a diplomat, you get plus 25%. So the difference is uh, rather negligible. Let me talk a little bit more about that, because the last thing that I really want 
to cover off here in this video is uh, the different multipliers that you can sort of force on other sieves. Now one of them, and I've already just talked about it, is installing uh, diplomats instead of spies in their capital. You get that plus 25% bonus uh, to your tourism score from having a diplomat. But there are other things that you need to consider and that you will have seen me do and you will have seen on screen throughout the video. Let's talk about them quickly because they really, really matter. And uh, some of the key ways to swing your tourism score from falling to rising or even rising rapidly. First up, it's open borders. Once you've established an embassy with another sieve, open borders becomes a trade option. It allows your influence to spread more easily and gives you 25% boost in tourism against the sieve with open borders. Fantastic. Next up, another thing that you can relatively easily influence, providing of course you're not at war, is trade routes. Uh, trade routes also spread religious uh, pressure, which is another bonus because you probably have a religion, uh, and you'll get that plus 25% bonus like the open borders. Next up, a shared religion. Uh, again, we're seeing the influence of religion spread through. When your civ's religion is dominant with, uh, within another civ's territory, so most of their cities or followers follow it, you'll get another 25% bonus to tourism. Uh, finally, uh, one of the last major multipliers is with hotels, airports, and the National Visitor Center. Now, I know these are buildings, not necessarily things you can force on other civs, but I really do need to cover it before the end of the video because it's one of the most important take-homes. Later in the game, hotels and airports become available. Their 50% bonuses to tourism from Great Works is helpful, but also the fact that any wonders or tile improvements that generate culture also receive that plus 50% bonus from culture to tourism is massive. It means, for example, any landmark tile that you've created from an archaeological dig within your borders also gets that plus 50%. Later in the game, landmarks can get even huger if you're stacking it with the freedom bonuses as well. Finally, one last thing that it would be completely unjust if I didn't cover it off is the importance of cultural policies. Aesthetics, which is one you might not often pursue, is incredibly useful and fundamental. I recommend for any culture and tourism play, as I've discussed already in my cultural video, but I will cover it off again now, just in case you missed it, go uh, uh, probably, I would say, maybe stay away from liberty and go tradition, but I will leave that up to you. But as soon as aesthetics becomes available, unlock it and push through it. Push through aesthetics, the bonuses are fantastic for both culture and tourism, and of course, as you're doing it, make sure that you set up your writer's guild, your artist guild, and so on and so forth, so that you can produce those great people, and then get the extra bonuses from aesthetics to generate them even faster, and your tourism will snowball as you move through into the later game, and pick up those final key texts like globalization, which just provides a massive, effectively 100% multiplier on everything you're doing, and that should give you the victory if you've played your cards right. Hey, thanks so much for watching everybody, my name's Jumbo Pixel, and we've discussed tourism today. If you enjoyed it and liked it, please do leave a like rating, it's really helpful for me and for the channel, and I super appreciate it, everything you do. And a massive shout out to all of the channel members, let's comment our exclusive uh, emojis and emotes below, and, and maybe we can grow our community a little bit more. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.